Hello, and welcome everyone to the Intrepid Museum's live virtual programming. Thank you so much for joining us today for our program, Flying in Style. We are so glad that you could be here with us. And if you have any questions as we go throughout anything, feel free to put them in the chat. My name is Alicia, and I'm an educator at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum in New York City, and I'll be your host today for the program. But just as a reminder, the museum's live streams are free. And if you would like to support us in delivering this exciting content, please do click in the link in the comments or in the description. So feel free to use the chat today to say hello. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know if you've ever been to the Intrepid Museum before. And of course, if you have any questions, you can put them there as well. So at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum, our mission is to honor our heroes, educate the public, and inspire our youth. And today we are going to be talking a little bit about planes that we have on the uh, Intrepid, and also more specifically about the artwork that you can find on some of those planes. Now, when I say artwork, I mean things like what it represents, the different color schemes that we have, and uh, how the designs of the airplanes can really help to liken it kind of to sports teams, believe it or not. So for those of you who may not be familiar, first of all, this is the Intrepid Museum. So our complex here is located on the west side of Manhattan in the Hudson River. Our museum is actually housed inside of a historic World War II aircraft carrier that you can see here at the USS Intrepid. And we also have on site a historic Cold War era submarine, the Space Shuttle Enterprise, and a British Airways Concorde. And of course, as you can see in the picture as well, yeah, the ship is really, really big too. So it is 913 feet long. That means it is so tall that, uh, it, rather long, if you stood it up on its end, it would be as tall as a New York City skyscraper. Uh, and it's also so long then that it, you could actually play three games of football on top uh, at the very same time too. So it was built in 1943 for a very specific purpose. It was made during a time when we were fighting countries all the way across the ocean, and we didn't have time to be able to launch our planes over here in America and send them all over, uh, over across the water to get to where we needed to go, because that would just take way too much fuel and too much time. So we created things like the Intrepid. Now, what do you call something like that? Tell me in the chat if you know, but what would you call something that is floating out at sea? Something that we could, you know, launch and land airplanes from out in the waters? Anyone know what we'd call that? Something with aircraft, something that maybe carries aircraft. <laughs> So yes, it is called an aircraft carrier. Exactly. So not only can ships like this carry the aircraft, but we can also, again, launch and land the planes, just like a floating airport in the water. And so when we were on the Intrepid, of course, we had a lot of different types of planes, and the planes had some special colors and some special markings. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to ask you, does anyone out there in the chat like sports? And if so, what are some of your favorite sports teams? You know, think about the different colors and the different logos that people have on sports teams. But let me know what your favorite sports teams are. And I'll start us off. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, originally. So, of course, I have to admit that my favorite sports teams are all from the Pittsburgh area. The Pittsburgh Steelers, who are amazing. The Penguins, who were pretty amazing when I was growing up. The Pirates, who were amazing when I was little, but now are not so much. Uh, but I'd love to see, you know, if you all like any particular sports teams. Because when we think about these sports teams and sports in general, again, we can really think about these colors and logos and shapes and, and symbols that can identify the teams themselves. For example, here in New York, the New York Mets, their colors are blue and white and orange, very prominent colors that we can uh, notice with them. Uh, but uh, the um, colors are actually also found on the New York state flag. So there is something of a little parallel there that we can identify with them being in New York. Uh, and we can also see some of those with planes too. So I want you to think about your favorite sports team. Think about what makes the team's branding so special, whether it be the colors or the logo or even the mascot, if there's a cool mascot that they have running around on the field. And I see Isla says, I like the Eagles for football. Great, awesome. So we're gonna head over and take a look at this plane here. This is the Avenger. All right, so this is a big blue plane that we'd like to talk about here a lot at the ship. And uh, we get, you know, a lot of people talk about this one because it's the oldest plane that we have on the ship. It's from World War II. 
And I brought you here, first of all, for a specific reason. Now, if you have come to any of our other programs, you might know that, yes, this is a camouflaged plane. Uh, but other planes during this time period also use this coloration as well. You'll notice there's these three different colors of blue. Uh, well, I guess two different colors of blue and white on the bottom. So the dark color on the top, the lighter blue in the center, and the white on the bottom. This type of camouflage is ca called countershade camouflage. And this is a way for them to be able to blend in with the ocean or the sky, depending on where you were looking at it. So if you're on a ship and you look up, you're going to see the white underbelly. So it's going to blend in with the clouds. Or if you're flying above it and looking down, you're going to see the dark blue. So it might blend in with the ocean. And if you're alongside it, it's going to be that kind of mid-shade blue that's going to blend in with the sky, right? Now, many planes had this coloration, including planes like the Hellcats and the Corsairs, who also flew um, at this time and around the Intrepid. Um, but you can see there, again, these, these blue colors. Here's some examples of that on the bottom. Um, and on the top there, you can actually see another Avenger. But that Avenger's not painted that blue color that we just saw, like the one on our hangar deck. This one is instead painted this gray color scheme. So some of the Avengers were this gray color. This is in the North Atlantic Ocean, where they would actually uh, have the gray Avengers. Now, why were some of them painted gray? Well, the weather up there in the north was a little bit different than what it might be out in the Pacific. There were a lot of gray clouds, very cold up there. So again, the gray helped it to blend into the area much, much better. So the color that we paint the plane in general has a lot to do with the weather, the surroundings, where it's going to be flying, of course. Uh, but even outside of that, if you are to look at these three planes here, there's something else that it has in common. All right, so take a close look. There is a particular marking that you can see on it. See if you can spot it. They all have a type of logo on their sides. You see it? You catch it? So it is right here in those red circles. So we can think of, first of all, the color of the jersey or of the plane, kind of like a jersey of a team. But the logo on it can also tell you specifically which team you're looking at or what country they're from. So this marking is something called a roundel. Now, this particular roundel represents the United States, that uh, blue circle with the white star and the two white uh, rectangles on the sides there. But if you didn't necessarily get that at first glance, I don't blame you because, yeah, it does kind of look like something's missing on it. So when you think of a country, you know, often you might think of the flag of the country and specifically the colors of the flag, you know, and of that country. So if this is the United States, what do you think might be missing here? There's a color that's missing for me. You know, when I think of the United States, I think of red, white, and blue, right? Of course, patriotic. But this one only has the blue and the white on it. So I think, well, where is the red? Well, believe it or not, it used to have red on it prior to that style. So if you take a look at this picture, you can see what it used to look like. It was a blue circle with a white star and a red dot in the middle. So why does it look different in the other pictures that we just looked at? Well, if you think, you know, the Navy, first of all, was there uh, involved in, in this conflict overseas in the Pacific Ocean, right? Why do you think they would remove the red dot from the roundel? They're over there fighting the Japanese Navy, and the planes that they were fighting against looked like this. So take a look at the Japanese roundel. <laughs> so this is a Mitsubishi Zero, and these planes were flown by the Japanese. And if you notice the roundel on these planes, you also can't miss there is that big red circle surrounded by the white. So it's got this element that is just a little bit too similar for comfort. You see that difference there? So if you're you know, flying along and you happen to see red out of the corner of your eye, maybe your gut instinct is to go, oh, I need to shoot this plane. But ugh, it's a little bit too similar if you had an American plane next to you. So if you think of it kind of like sports teams, all right, how even if they have similar colors to the team that they're playing against, um, they've got, you know, home teams wear white jerseys and away teams wear colored jerseys. So they had to get rid of that dot because they didn't want to be mistaken for Japanese planes. They wanted to do something that looked completely different. So everyone, we are actually going to play a little bit of a challenge here, the roundel challenge. Um, and I'm going to show you some roundels and I want you to guess what country it comes from just based on looking at it. So you are going to see a roundel and two flags. 
And so if you think that the uh, roundel comes from the country whose flag is on the left, in the chat, I want you to type the letter A. And if you think it comes from the country whose flag is on the right, I want you to type B. All right, so here we go. Oh, sorry, here we go. Here's the roundel challenge, everyone. And tell me now which you think, what country you think this is from. So take a look at it first before we go to the different options. Just kind of soak it in. Think about what country it might belong to. Think about the colors. Think about the symbols. Think about any significance that it might tell you which country it belongs to. And now I want you to make a guess. Do you think it is A, Australia, or B, New Zealand? So go ahead and type your answer in the chat for me. Which of these countries do you think this roundel belongs to? I'll give you a couple seconds to go ahead and answer some uh, answer it in there for me. All right, I see Timmy A. All right, a lot of A's, John and Steve, Suzanne. Excellent. So I'm seeing a whole lot of A's here. All righty, everyone. So let's see what the answer is. Patrick, all right. The answer is A. Very nice, everyone. So the answer to this one is A, Australia. Uh, so you'll notice that although we don't see that exact symbol on the flag, the colors are, of course, very similar. And Australia, of course, is very, very well known for its kangaroos. So a very fitting roundel. Now, uh, the other one that I had up there was New Zealand. And check it out. Here's New Zealand's roundel. Similar colors. But does anyone know what type of bird that is? This is the national bird of New Zealand and also the nickname for people who live in New Zealand. Anyone know the name of this bird here? This bird is called the kiwi. So very similar roundels again, but the animal on it is ever so slightly different. All right, let's do another one. So here's the next one. Take a good look at it. We see some yellow and blue and red, and we've got that star in the middle. All right, so looking at these now, which flag do you think it belongs to? Which uh, which country here? Do you think it's Zambia or do you think it's Colombia? A for Zambia, B for Colombia. Oh, and Isla, your parents were from New Zealand. Very cool. So they must know, you must know the kiwi bird exactly. All right. So my friends, is it A, Zambia or B, Colombia? I'm seeing a bunch of Bs, Isla and John and Suzanne and Steve. Daddy Mark says definitely A. Okay. <laughs> Very strong feelings there. All right, we've got another B. Okay, everyone. So the answer is Columbia. This one might have been a little bit obvious. Those colors are so striking and so bold. Um, you can definitely see the parallel here with those colors and the way that you've got the uh, the lines that are straight across like that. Um, but let's take a look at the Zambian roundel. Here it is. So again, you've got the similar colors on the flag, uh, but the, the bird symbol there also as well. So that bird symbol is being carried across both of them too, as well as the green, red, orange, and black. Very nice. All right, here's another one for you. All right, soak that in. We've got green, yellow, and black. And those uh, that circles. All right, so do we think this is Ireland or Jamaica? Take a wild guess. A for Ireland and B for Jamaica. What do you think? Do you think this roundel belongs to Ireland or Jamaica? John says B. Steve says B. Any other guesses? <laughs> got a definitely A again. All right. <laughs> got some more Bs coming in. Okay. So you guys are getting good at this. The answer is Jamaica again. So again, you could probably tell based on the colors, the green, the yellow, and the black. Um, again, similar, but the shape is a little different. Theoretically, they could put that X in the middle of it, but they decided to do the round symbols, the circles. And here's Ireland, uh, just for fun. Ireland, I think, is actually one of the coolest ones. Um, if you take a look, it's got the same colors of the flag, the green, the white, and the orange, uh, but it's got that really cool swirly pattern, and it kind of evokes like a Celtic knot that they're so, so famous for. 
that really swirly cool image there. Um, so that is Ireland. Okay, here's another one. This might start to get a little trickier here. Trickier here. We're looking at some kind of like a checkerboard pattern, some boxes, red and white. All right. So do we think this is Poland or Canada? And I apologize for the, the bad formatting on my slide here. Do we think this is A, Poland or B, Canada? All right. So Daddy Mark says Poland. What else we got? John says B. Steve says A. All right. So we're a little split on this one. Very interesting. Timmy votes A for Poland. Okay. Nice. Got another A in there. All right. Ming Ma says A. So it looks like maybe we're leaning a little more. Isla says A, a little more towards A. All right. And the answer is Poland. Very nice. So again, if you look at the colors, the markings, the patterns here, the, the colors are close with the red and the white. Um, and you've got those kind of squared off, you know, kind of shapes in it. They're the rectangles. Um, Canada, though, as you know, the Canadian flag, there it is, the red and the white, but it's got that Canadian leaf. So, of course, their roundel is this blue, white, and red with that big maple leaf on it, just like their flag. But a little tricky, right? A little tricky. All right, now here is this last one is going to be the trickiest of all. Are you ready? Take a look at this one. All right, so we are looking at the colors. Here we go. Do you think this is Kenya or Jordan? What do you think? So A for Kenya, B for Jordan. Now these have the same colors in their flag, the black, the red, and the white. And the green. <laughs> so similar patterns, similar colors. Do you think it is A, Kenya, or B, Jordan? So I'm seeing some A's, I'm seeing some B's. Ooh, a good mix here. Isla says A. John and Steve say B. Mingma says B. All right. Timmy likes B, says Suzanne. Okay. And everyone, the answer is Kenya. So actually, when you look at Kenya's flag, you can really see some similarities there. You can tell there's the thicker stripes, but the thin white lines in between. All right. And then if you look at Jordan's flag and Jordan's roundel, those stripes are thicker all the way across. But of course, the Jordanian one also has that red triangle, just like the flag, as well as that seven pointed white star um, right in the center. So that those are the two. So that was a little bit of a tricky one, but you all did very, very well. So um, as you can see, these roundels all have very distinctive characteristics that can help us to learn where they're from. Sometimes they don't necessarily look exactly like a flag, but there are certain elements to it that can uh, kind of evoke a little bit of what the flag would be like or what the idea of what's going on in the country, for example, kangaroos. So I want to pause here before we move on. Does anyone have any questions before we continue? Any questions at all? are all roundel circles. So, you know, even though uh, it sounds like it would be a circle, right, the word round is in roundel, uh, they are not all round. In fact, they can be a variety of shapes. shapes. Most of them are round. Um, but as we saw with Poland, for instance, that one was more square shaped. Uh, and But some are even kind of more shaped like a shield, like you might see in like a medieval battle or something, like a shield. Um, some of them are shaped more triangularly. Um, or also even kind of like a cross. The, the one from Germany is sort of shaped like a cross. Um, most of them are circles, but um, there are certainly other shapes as well. All right. Any other questions? Do roundels always stay the same? No, they don't. So um, I'm assuming this means like, you know, throughout time. Um, and they don't. As we saw before, the American roundel um, you know, had originally that red dot in the center of it. And it was just round, just a circle. But then once they realized the red dot was a bad idea, uh, given the conflict that they were fighting in, they removed that. And instead, they added the two 
white uh, rectangles on either side. And as we'll actually get to in just a little a little bit, you're going to see that they even changed it a little bit after that as well, after World War II. Um, so no, they can certainly change throughout time. Um, usually they don't change dramatically, uh, but they can certainly change uh, given the conflict that they're in, for example. Great questions. All right, so roundels act like logos, right? They help us to identify countries. Uh, but if we were to look at another plane that we have on the hangar deck here in the Intrepid, you will notice uh, like this one here. So this is the Fury which is a jet plane from the Cold War era after the Avenger then. Um, so it takes a little bit of a different approach, you might notice. So it's not painted blue, like that counter shade camouflage of the Avenger, uh, or like the dark blue of the Hellcats or the Corsairs, but uh, it is in fact kind of primarily gray. But you might notice something else on it, a big, big symbol on it. It has on it a very bold yellow lightning bolt painted across the side of it. That is kind of cool, um, and it was done on purpose. But before I get to that, I will point out something else on it, and you can actually see it a little bit more clearly from the back side of it. I sort of alluded to this uh, in regards to how the um, roundels can change over time. So I wanted to point out again the roundel. This roundel is what our uh, American roundels currently look like. So. It looks a little similar to before. Again, you got the white star on a blue circle and those two white stripes on the sides. But now it's got the red on it again. A little bit more of a muted red color too, not bright red. Um, but those red stripes on it actually does make it look a little bit more like our American flag uh, with the red and white stripes on it. So this is what it looks like today again. And this is what it started looking like after World War II. Um, when the planes started flying a lot faster, they realized that camouflage wasn't really as necessary. Um, and this was, again, around the time of the Cold War when we started introducing jet planes that went super, super fast. So at that point, they said, all right, it's OK to put the red on it. If we were to be fighting Japan, it's OK to make whatever colors and whatever symbols like that lightning bolt um, because it was going to be going so very, very fast. So this is now what it looks like for the American roundel. And it's the one that we've kind of stuck with throughout history. But going back to that lightning bolt, in the gray color, um, you'll actually also notice that sometimes we had uh, low visibility planes that we needed to be using. So sometimes we wanted it to be very, very low, um, low visibility. So meaning you can't really see it very well. And oftentimes those planes would just only be gray. And they would also make the uh, symbols on it, the roundels, also a very muted color. They wouldn't want to make any colors on it. They just want to have shades of gray or black on it. So this is what some low visibility roundels might look like. The United States one, again, does have that stripe down the center of it, like uh, we added to it for the red. But now it's all in this gray color scheme. Um, and the Dominican Republic one, you can see on the left. And again, Colombia, which we saw earlier that had lots of bright colors. But now it's just the outlines of those colors in just in black and white. Or black and just black, <laughs> just black lines. So. Um, that was very important for them to be able to not be seen. But for those that were okay to be seen, we could add these lightning bolts, but this gray color. You know, the Navy used jets more and more, and they were really um, trying to limit the amount of paint that they used on jets because all of that paint really did add a lot of weight. It doesn't seem like it'd be that much, but if you're painting something really, really big, it adds up. And in some cases, it could add 50 to 100 pounds at a time. So instead, they decided to take a lot of that extra paint off and they just added more, more fuel so that it could go faster. Now, why the lightning bolt? Well, pilots were able to add some designs to their planes to make them even more unique. Um, you can kind of think of it, again, going back to the sports analogy, uh, if you, you know, know of an athlete that maybe has special hair, again, I think of the Steelers, I think of Troy Palomalu and his fabulous hair, um, or, you know, they always wear long sleeves or, you know, special socks or a wristband or goggles or something like that. Those are what they wear in order to kind of make them individuals on the field or the court. So they have their uniforms on, but there's still something a little bit more identifiable about them. So same thing here. So we've got this lightning bolt on here. And also in this plane right here, this is uh, the uh, Skyhawk. And you might notice on the side of it, you've got the green symbol. 
So that green symbol along the side of it is what squadron it was a part of. It's kind of like a smaller team that flew together within a team uh, and everyone who came from the same ship though. So these green things on it kind of looks like, you know, like a, a lizard or an iguana, right? So as you could probably guess, the name of this squadron was the Green Lizards. And here is their patch. So this is the logo that they got to wear on their clothing. This is what their attack squadron logo looked like. I think that looks pretty awesome. Some people say that it looks like an alligator or a sea monster or even Godzilla standing there holding a trident. Um, and of course, it, it's very pretty, actually. It's got that sunrise or a sunset, you know, over the water there, all the, the rays coming out. But on the plane, it doesn't quite look as detailed, right? And that is because the artist, you know, when he went to go paint all of these planes, he was probably like, uh-uh, this is a little too complicated to have to paint all of that stuff on a bunch of airplanes and to make it all look exactly the same. So they needed something that was just a little bit simpler and easier to replicate. And so that is why the green lizards took on this symbol, a little bit simpler to paint um, on all of their planes. So it is, yes, a little bit less intimidating guns than Godzilla with a pitchfork, but still pretty cool nonetheless. Now, um, this Skyhawk is pretty special to the museum because it is the only plane that actually took off and landed from the Intrepid. Uh, all the others that we've seen um, are types of planes that have taken off and landed, but this particular one is really special to us because it did actually take off and land uh, from the Intrepid itself. Uh, now, there is actually another funny story about this plane, too. There were two different squadrons, uh, and they were going out on Liberty, which basically means that they had some free time. And they were going to land on an air base, and each squadron had about 14 planes each. So one squadron goes away. The other squadron, uh, one night they went over, and they stole one of the planes from the other squadron, and they painted it with their own squadron's markings. So again, same plane, but different markings. So when it came time to leave, they left with all their planes, and the other squadron was missing one. And they were like, hey, where'd our plane go? Until they realized that the plane was there. It just had the other team's markings on it. So they played a little trick on them. All right. So again, I want to pause here and see if we have any other questions before we move on. Any other questions? Did the pilots actually paint the planes? So overall, the paint that you can see on the planes, like for example, the Avenger behind me, um, these planes were typically painted by Navy painters. They would be done a very specific way, or again, with this gray color, they would do that. But the pilots did get to paint on their planes too. And they were able to paint these very special designs. Um, they did have sometimes, you know, a painter that would do it for a bunch of squadrons, but oftentimes, yes, the painters um, were sometimes the pilots themselves. They got to decorate their planes and we'll see a few more of those a little bit later as well. All right. Any other questions? Can you write words on the planes? Yeah. Uh, so um, I think in a little bit, actually, we'll get to see some words too. Sometimes the pilots would have their names on the planes. Um, whoever was flying the plane, if it was a plane that you would always be flying, then oftentimes the name of the pilot would be uh, written right kind of under the cockpit window there. Um, so certainly, yes, there were uh, words or names rather that were painted uh, on the planes too. All right. So this, my friends, is another type of plane here. This is a Blue Angels Tiger. So this was part of a very special squadron. Um, they were a squadron of aerial acrobatic pilots. So they would do special shows all around the country to show off all of their skills and their techniques that the Navy pilots were trained to do. Um, and in fact, about a year ago, uh, many of us here in New York City were treated to a show by the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds as they flew around New York City uh, in order to kind of raise our spirits while we were all in lockdown. So maybe you got to see that out your window. That was really a special thing to see. Um, but specifically on the Blue Angels plane, um, you can see on the side of it here, this is the insignia of the Blue Angels. So you can see it's actually got an aircraft carrier. It's a little difficult to see there, but on the bottom left, there is actually a picture of an aircraft carrier. Um, because these very frequently blew, flew off of uh, aircraft carriers, the Blue Angels planes were part of specifically the Navy. And then it's also got four Blue Angels uh, flying in, in formation up on the top right. 
Um, so that is an, a, a kind of a roundel, right? That's their insignia. And again, that is now actually in the shape of kind of a shield. Um, and then, of course, it's lovely Blue Angels uh, script there on the side. Um, the color of the Blue Angels plane is specifically a very special color called Blue Angels Blue. And the yellow color is called Insignia Yellow. So it's a very specific shade of blue and yellow that they use. Now, another insignia that is cool to look at is this one. This one kind of looks like a pirate, right? This is the Jolly Roger sign. This is a pretty common one that has been used and reused a lot over time. Um, there's a lot of different squadrons that have used this skull and crossbones symbol. Um, but uh, only in one Navy squadron at a time can you use it. So if you are in the Jolly Roger squadron, that is your logo. But if your squadron is decommissioned, then the insignia is kind of up for grabs and another group can, can grab it to use it. Um, but this is a pretty cool one. This is located on the Cougar up on our flight deck. Um, and again, you can see that Jolly Roger logo on it. So a very fun one and a one that often strikes fear in the heart of many pirates. Are. Across from the Cougar, we've got this plane. This is called the Kafir. Now, it does also have a roundel on it, but take a close look. Let's see if you can guess what country that roundel represents just by looking at it. So take a close look. The one we're looking at is the white circle with that blue star on it. Or it might be black. I'm not sure. I think it's blue. So anyone have a guess what country... This is not an American roundel. What country might that roundel represent on this plane here? This is the kafir. It means lion cub, by the way. It's like Simba. Anyone know? This is a very powerful supersonic jet, by the way. Um, and here's a hint. It was camouflaged to blend in with the desert. Hey, Jeremy, very good. It is Israel. Very nice. So yes, if you take a look, here we go. So this is uh, the Israeli roundel and of course the Israeli flag with the Star of David on it, the six-pointed star. Oh, yes, and it was blue. Um, so we have uh, the Israeli roundel. Very good guess. Excellent, Jeremy. So yes, um, that was the kafir. Now, um, if you remember, we also were talking about teams within teams. So we've got this one here. This is another type of team. This is the US Coast Guard and their logo is on it as well. You can see a little more closely here. This is what their logo looks like. Um, this uh, is the symbol from 1790 here. It's got their anchor. Um, and this in particular, this particular uh, helicopter, rather, is one from the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Um, these types of helicopters were used to save people from the water. So it's got the Coast Guard insignia next to the roundel. Um, and it says Coast Guard on it, rather. Um, and then, of course, the American uh, roundel as well on the bottom with the star in the circle and the stripes. Uh, cool thing about this helicopter, though, because it could rescue people from the water, it's actually got some buoys that you can see on either side over where the wheels are. Uh, so it can float while it lands uh, on the water and, and helps to rescue people. So that's a cool thing about this one. Uh, this plane is also very interesting. This is the Air Maki. Um, now the roundel on this one is located on the top of the wing. So you can't really see it in this picture, but you can see the stripes that go alongside of it. Same colors here. So we're gonna be looking at red, white, and green. All right, so can anyone take a guess? There are a couple of countries that might have that color in their flag, but anyone want to take a guess what country this plane might belong to? Red, white, and green. Let me know in the chat. Anyone know? This plane um, is kind of like the Blue Angels of this country, by the way. Anyone know? Red, white, and green. Take a wild guess for me. So, oh, there you go, Steve. Italy, very nice. So, yeah, again, this is kind of the um, Italian version of the Blue Angels. Uh, on the side of it, on the tail and the back, 
It says frecce tre colori, tricolored arrows is what that means. And they do stunts just like the Blue Angels do. Um, and they even do uh, colors in their smoke. Um, and they, uh, you know, train pilots in, in this particular one. So uh, the stripes on the front, there's the three colored arrows. Yes, lots of guesses for Italy. Excellent. Um, so this is, of course, the Italian roundel. And it matches the Italian flag quite nicely. The green, the red, and the white. Uh, now, right across the way from there on the flight deck, all these planes are on our flight deck, by the way. You can see them if you come visit us in person. Right across from there, we've got another really cool insignia on a plane. This one looks like a playing card, specifically the Ace of Spades. And this is one of the oldest known squadrons. They actually go back to World War I. But of course, many other squadrons have used it over the years. This one specifically was for VMA-231. And they used Harrier jets in a very specific way. This is a Harrier jet here, uh, a very cool plane that we talk about in some of our other programs. It's got vents on the sides that help it to go, but they can actually actually be angled downward too. That lets the plane go straight up and down. So it's something called a VTOL aircraft, vertical takeoff and landing. Um, really great for landing on an aircraft carrier too, because you don't need long runways. So that Ace of Spades is a very, very uh, common one. And of course, everyone, because we are talking about artwork, of course, I do have to show you our beloved Crusader, which has that shark face on the front, a very, very popular uh, logo that was has been used on jets throughout the years. Um, not logo, I guess just kind of a styling that they like to do. So this was painted by the pilot. Um, and again, he did it because he wanted to differentiate his plane um, and also because he thought it looked really, really cool. So this shark thing is something that, you know, it's it's got those big, scary teeth. It's right over the engine where it's going to be, uh, or the intake, rather, where it's going to be sucking in all of the air um, in order to make it go real fast. So they thought that that shark would be good. It's got that gray color on the rest of the plane. A very, very common um, thing that they would paint on it for just making their planes look cool. So even with all of this, everyone, of course, we do have to make decisions about the artwork on the planes that we have at the museum. Um, and do you see actually on the top of the Crusader there, um, right where the cockpit is, you see that blue up there on the top. So that's not actually artwork. That is actually a special paint that we use to protect the inside of the cockpit of the plane from the sun because it's out there exposed to the elements all day. Uh, so, you know, as you can imagine, if you have a car, sometimes if you are in a really sunny place, you know, you put that, that visor up in your front window to protect if you have like leather seats, for example. You don't want the sun baking the interior of your car all day long. Uh, so imagine if you're an airplane, you've got a cockpit that's basically a moonroof over you, right? That's going to really uh, bake and, and start to mess with some of the interior components. So um, our, uh, our um, aircraft restorators have decided to put this blue paint on it to help to protect the insides. Uh, and so it can also be used for preventative measures as well. Um, and actually, everyone, if we go back to this one as well, we can talk about the way that our uh, restorators have also decided to take a look at some planes. This is the Sky Raider. And you can see that it's painted silver. And it's done that way because when we got it and we restored it, we wanted to make it look original. It didn't actually look this way when we first got it. We wanted to make it look the most original. We wanted to make it look how it actually used to look when it flew. Um, and originally, this one had a plain aluminum outside with just plain silver. There was no paint on it. Now, that would look really cool, but it's kind of hard on the plane, again, because it rains and it snows here in New, here in New York. Um, so the aluminum would start to corrode and it would start to get rusty while it's up there on the flight deck forever. And so that wouldn't be very nice. Uh, so the museum decided to paint it gray to make it kind of look aluminum, um, but also still protect the metal underneath as well. So there's a lot of thought that goes into the way that we also display these. Um, one last thing I'll point out here is you might notice that very colorful picture that you've got on the front there. Um, this is the image that they used for the testing division of the Sky Raider. Um, and you can see this particular image is really fun. It's like these little, I guess, ducks kind of, these little birds that are in a nest. Uh, and one of them has sort of fallen all out of the nest and they're wearing a helmet flying around the world. Uh, so this was a testing division. So they're, they're kind of the, uh, you know, 
<laughs> the test pilots, I guess, uh, learning how to do that, falling out of the nest. All right, my friends. So thank you all so much for joining us for our program today. If you have any additional questions for us uh, about anything that I talked about today um, or anything else, you can reach out to us through our website, intrepidmuseum.org, or also through social media. Uh, I would like to thank you so much for watching and sharing your comments with us and uh, answering all of my fun questions. Um, and um, of course, we have introduced a number of new live streams. So please do follow and subscribe to this channel or visit our website for the latest streaming schedule. And also, if you're able, your donations of any amount can help to keep our programs free or low cost. Uh, and you can also explore becoming a member online. Our museum is currently open to the public. We are open. Um, uh, Thursdays through Sundays, uh, in, uh, from 10 to five in order to, uh, for have to have you come and visit us. So we'd love to see you on site. So you can check out some of these planes in person if you'd like. And our next family program is Thursday at 3 PM. It is lunar landers. Uh, so we're going to be talking a bit about some of the machines that we've landed on other planets and moons and things. So, uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us today and hopefully we will see you around for an upcoming program. So thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you next time.